everybody. Welcome to my Shalom Zone. My name is Sherry Dawn and it's my great honor and privilege to get to share this grace encounter with you today. I want to read you something out of Psalm 27 that has been pivotal in my life many, many, many times because I had to make a conscious decision to do what David did so that I could get the results that David got. <laughs> and maybe not in such a dramatic way because uh, the enemies in my life pale somewhat in comparison to what he had to do or had to deal with, but the principle is the same. And I have found it so beneficial so many times once I learned it and, and began to practice it. And as someone who was very familiar with a cloud of woe is me and nothing's ever going to change and just despair and depression. You know, I lived in a black hole for years and I thought that was normal. But when I found out that I could speak to my mind and loose wrong thoughts from my mind and to take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I, I chose to step out on that and to act on that because I believed it. Then the Lord began to open these other passages to me that helped build on that foundation. So this is one of those. Psalm 27, and it starts out with a prayer in verse 11. It says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Now, if you've got enemies chasing you, you don't want to be stumbling around and can't find the path. So this is a wise prayer to pray. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then he says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, verse 13 is the one that I want to center up on tonight. Verse 14 is the one that the Lord used um, almost three summers ago now when my heart was trying to quit on me, and I was very, very weak. And um, there were several months there that I was taking communion four, five, six times a day, sometimes 12 times a day. And I was standing on this verse 14 to that the Lord shall strengthen my heart. And he did. I'm a totally different person now to what I was back then. And it's because I just believed the word of God and received the communion and discerning the body. And that's a different story. I've shared bits and pieces of that with you in the past. And today I want to focus on verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, to faint means to lose strength, to... Uh, get disoriented, to get weak, um, wobbly, whatever, and just lose consciousness sometimes. And whether you're talking physically or spiritually, there are times that things happen that can so overwhelm you that you feel faint and the temptation to just give in to the faintedness and just let it take over and just not be conscious of the struggle and the pressure for a while is almost overwhelming. But David found a solution. He found a cure. And this is something that we want to learn to embrace as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I had fainted. It would have happened to me too, just like it was happening to everybody else, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So what I want to share with you is that our believing makes a difference Believed is from the Hebrew word amen, and it's where we get our word amen, or we say here in the South, amen. It, it means more if you say amen. <laughs> I'm teasing. But amen means to trust or believe to go to the right hand, to turn to the right, to be firm or faithful, to establish. Now, what's, what's the deal with turning to the right or going to the right hand? The right hand is the hand of power in Middle Eastern culture. It's the hand of favor. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. So when you're saying amen to the truths and the promises of God, right there at the right hand, that's where you are, okay? So this is just wisdom 
to learn to speak amen to the truths of God and, and be very careful not to say amen just because somebody is saying something that happens to appeal to your flesh at the moment, especially if you're in a snit and you're wanting to get even with somebody. Don't amen that. We don't need to come in agreement with that. But do take every opportunity to say amen or amen to those promises of God and to the declarations of his kingdom because that agreement is powerful and being at the place of the right hand where we've been seated in Christ saying amen makes us more conscious of that. Now in Exodus 33 in verse 19, this is the passage where Moses had asked the Lord, show me your glory. And God said, he didn't say, I won't show you my glory. He said, I'll cause all my goodness or I'll make all my goodness to pass before you. And it's the same word that's used here in Psalm 27, 13, when David said, I expected to see or believed to see your goodness in the land of the living. Goodness is from the Hebrew word too, but it means good, anything good. It means goodness, but it also means gladness, beauty, and joy. So right in the middle of the mess, David is making a declaration, I believe I'm still going to see your goodness. I believe I'm going to see the gladness, and I believe I'm going to see the joy. I believe I'm going to see the beauty of the Lord. That's powerful. Now, I need to reestablish the fact that we are not like the world. They're limited to what they can see what they can feel, what they can touch, what they can experience in the natural. They cannot go beyond that. But we get to believe in the very heart, the very character of God, and by believing, draw that goodness, that beauty, that gladness, and that joy into the earth, into our circumstances. Now, when David specifies and said, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I hope you understand that that means the land of the living equals the dirty, rotten, stinking here and now, and not the beautiful, wonderful, pain-free hereafter. <laughs> okay. Just as long as we're clear on that. David believed. He had faith because he knew the heart of of God. Yes, he was in a difficult season. He was not denying that. Yes, his enemies were real. He was not denying that. But he, what he believed kept him from fainting and falling down under the pressure of what was coming against him. And if you don't get anything else of what I say in this session, if you get that, you got a hat full and it will help you. Now, before the cross, Jesus testified in John chapter 10 and verse 7, and he said, I am the door of the sheep. And at that point in time, the sheep were the house of Israel. But after the cross, Paul and Barnabas, the Holy Spirit had come, and they visited several cities of the Gentiles, and they're preaching the gospel of grace, and they're telling the truth that if you just believe on Jesus, you're forgiven of all the things that you couldn't be forgiven and justified under the law of Moses. And there's something amazing that happens in this uh, time frame that I believe is significant. And I want to turn over and read in the book of Acts, chapter 14. This is when they've made full circuit and they're coming back to share with the church what's been going on. Acts 14, verses 23 through 28. When they had ordained elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed. Again, this is Paul and Barnabas. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Attalia. And thence they sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Now, recently the Holy Spirit snagged my attention with that fact, that truth, that the door of faith 
was opened to the Gentiles. The door for believing was opened to the Gentiles. So David believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Jesus declares he's the door. And now we find after the Holy Spirit has come on the day of Pentecost and several years down the road when the Gentiles, it was opened up for the truth to be preached to them in the gospel. The testimony of the apostles is that the door of faith had been opened to the Gentiles. Now, in Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, we find Jesus making another declaration about doors and keys. And I want you to, I want you to get this because I believe it's going to bless you. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7, he says, To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. Now Jesus is talking here. If you've got one of those Bibles where the words are recorded in red, this is all in red. And he said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. And I'm not going to get into teaching about the different churches and all that stuff. What I do want to point out is the door of faith is still open. And the fellow that opened it is the guy that's got the key. <laughs> and he, the one that opened it, is the one that said, once I open it, no man can shut it. So I want you to be able to rejoice and to rest your heart in the truth that the door of believing is open. The door of faith is open. And it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Greek. It doesn't matter what color you are, how big a bank account you have, or whether you even have a bank account. Doesn't matter whether you're male or female. That door is open to give access into the things of God. And if you are born again, you've already moved through that door. But now you're in a position to move things through that door from the invisible realm back into this realm where you can use it. And you do it all by believing. Okay? To get things to move through the door... You have to speak your trust. You have to speak out your faith because believing means your trust or your faith. And the scripture tells us in Romans 10, 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is the reason that I don't just give you my personal opinions on these broadcasts. I give you what the word of God says because my heart is to get your faith triggered, to get your faith reaching out and believing in the goodness of God so you can experience the things of the goodness of God. Mm. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. And if you've got a pencil, you need to write this down. And at some point, go read this and maybe even memorize it. It says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Believing and speaking go together in the kingdom. Cannot separate them. Because if you're going to be quiet about things, you're not going to see things happen. We have to speak what we believe. Faith comes by hearing, but it's activated by speaking, okay? When David wrote, that unless he had believed to see the goodness of the Lord, he was, in a sense, speaking his faith on paper. He believed to see that goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in spite of his rotten circumstances at the moment. Now Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 tells us that Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. Now that's wonderful news because if you're born again, Jesus lives in you. So he's the door. He has the key. He starts you on the journey of faith. He's the author. He starts you on that journey and he finishes it. He sees to it that you make it. And that should give you such hope and such comfort. Because he always is going to finish the good work that he starts in us. And since everything in the kingdom is accessed by faith, the scripture says without faith or without believing, it's impossible to please God. Why? Is it just because he gets up with his knickers in a twist one day and decides he's going to be crabby and less people believe? No. The reason it displeases him is because we cannot access what belongs to us if we're not believing it belongs to us. Hmm. 
his heart breaks because he paid such a price to be able to redeem us and call us sons and put us in a position to have an inheritance in Christ and to see us sit in ashes and sackcloth mourning every day of our lives and pining away because of we not seeing anything happen good on our behalf. And all the time, it's just because we've not understood the door of faith's open. Jesus is the author and the finisher. He lives in me. All I've got to do is hear what God's promised, believe that enough to speak it, and it starts rolling toward me. I mean, it's that simple. And because it's so simple is the reason that it's so blaming hard. <laughs> because we stumble all around it. And we make mountains out of molehills. And we make our faith the end idea, the end goal, you know, instead of just using our faith as the tool that it's supposed to be. Believe you've been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. That's the opening in the door. You have access because of the blood of Jesus, because you've been cleared of all guilt. And you can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Grace is God's undeserved favor. All of these promises are given to us because of God's undeserved favor. But we have to humble ourselves to receive that undeserved favor and quit thinking we have to work for it. We have to earn it. We have to punish ourselves for so long before we're worthy of it. Get rid of that stinking thinking because it's killing you. Learn to receive what God has so freely given. Now, faith speaks the living word over dead situations and changes them. Faith speaks into the future and declares the end that it expects to see. Faith talks like God talks and God declares the end from the beginning according to Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. Faith declares the end that it expects to see not based on just idle daydreams, but based on revelation of the living word of God, which cannot lie. This is one of the reasons that I pray just several times throughout the day when I'm fellowshipping with the Lord. Father, pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Because you can't believe for it if you don't have a revelation of it. If you don't even know it's there, if it's yours, you can't believe for that. And this is the reason that ministers have got a whole lot to answer for when they've stood in the pulpit and talked golf scores and, and you know, politics and anything and everything except the living words of God. There's a time and a place for all of that. And, and I'm not meaning to condemn or criticize anybody, but it's just the only way sheep can grow and be healthy is if they're fed the right diet and they have to eat the word of God. And our, our opinions and, you know, voicing out the things that, you know, that doesn't feed them. It just gets them agitated a lot of times. They need to be fed. Now, this is the last broadcast that I'm going to do for 2020. Um, I'm going to, once I get this one wrapped up, I'm going to uh, take the last week off and, and do some things that I need to do around the house in preparation for some events that are happening in my life. And, but I want to take this opportunity to encourage you to let go of 2020. And as I've encouraged you in uh, episodes in the past to learn how to dump the junk, just go before the Lord and cast your care on Him. Don't carry it into the next day. Don't carry it into the next week. Don't carry it into the next year. And if you've never learned to do that, then we'll start right here and, and start just by dumping the junk of the whole last year, giving it to Jesus, and starting this fresh year clean from the pressures and the frustrations and the anxieties that all of the stuff that has happened in 2020 has caused. Because if you don't on purpose lay it at Jesus' feet and give it to him, then you will carry the residue of it into the next day, into the next week, into the next year, and it just piles up and piles up and piles up, and it becomes this low-level stress that sets up harmful hormones and chemicals in your body that starts eating away at the cell walls that make up your organs and all that stuff. And as it's eating away at all of that, it's deteriorating your health, that low-level stress. 
And this is the reason that God told us to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. And we have to believe that and on purpose practice it. So I'm going to help you lay that stuff down. And then I'm going to lead you into just some basic declarations of good things that you can expect in 2021. Because we need to proclaim our faith. We having the same spirit of faith speak okay this is the way it works and if you've never done this before if you feel kind of wonky and weird because you've never heard of anybody doing this before hey that's okay it's okay to feel that way everybody does to start with but once you begin to get an understanding of how this works and how critical it is for your future you will learn to speak and declare that you expect to see the good things of God in your life. And when the enemy comes around trying to peddle his junk and trying to make you think that you're still under the law and you're still under all of his curse and that you deserve all of this rotten stuff, you'll send him on down the road and you won't buy in to what he's selling. Okay? So let's just take a moment and you just repeat after me. And this is very simple, nothing hard about it. We're just having a conversation with God because we're two or three are gathered together, dear Jesus is, right there in the midst. And it doesn't matter if we're separated by miles and we're only gathered together around YouTube. That's okay, too. He transcends time and space. No worries to him. It doesn't bother him a bit. What matters to him is that we believe what he said and that he's more than willing to become our resting place and to dispose of the junk for us. So let's give him the chance, okay? Here we go. Lord Jesus, uh, we come to you as our high priest, and we're so thankful that you've invited us to cast our cares over on you, to come unto you when we labor and we're heavy laden, because you've promised that you would give us rest, and we believe that. And Lord, 2020 has been a bummer in so many ways. There have been endless opportunities to be frightened. There have been endless opportunities to be angry. There have been endless opportunities to be um, discouraged. And having done the best that we could do, we've still failed miserably to stay upbeat all the time. And we're just very thankful that you don't disown us because of that weakness in fact you told us that your strength is made perfect in weakness so we agree together now and we want to just speak off all of these things that have bothered our minds and burdened us this past year okay i'm going to speak it out and then pause and give you an opportunity to repeat after me okay lord jesus I give you all my fear, all my frustrations, all of my anger, all of my anxiousness, all of my disappointment, all my confusion, all the hurt that has happened in 2020. I believe that when I cast my care over on you, you care for me. I believe the verse that says we have been made one spirit. And that word spirit comes from a word that means breath. So I'm just going to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out and be very mindful. You are with me. You will not forsake me. You've gone ahead of me into 2021 
and I have nothing to fear. Okay? You should have felt a little bit of a settling sensation on the inside of you once you proclaimed that. Now I just want you to repeat after me and proclaim some good things that you can expect to see in 2021. I'm basing these off scriptures, but I'm not going to take time to read out where I found all the scriptures. Just This is one time you're just going to have to trust me that they're in there. <laughs> if not, get you a Strong's Concordance and look them up and dig them out yourself. It'll be good for you. Here we go. 2021 is the year I forget the shame of my youth. Ooh, that's preaching to somebody. I felt that. 2021 is the year I get established in grace, established in righteousness, and established in truth. 2021 is the year I personally taste and see that God is good. I expect to flourish in 2021 because I am a tree of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I expect my God to meet all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus in 2021. I expect to prosper and be in health in 2021 because Jesus already bore my sins in his body on the tree. He carried my sickness, my weakness, my sorrow, my pain. And just as surely as those stripes fell on him, by those same stripes, I am healed. I expect to walk as a king and a priest in 2021 because old things have passed away and all things are become new. The Lord be magnified who has made me righteous and given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you as you turn your back on 2020 and face 2021. The Lord stir up holy boldness in you that you may go through the door of faith and receive everything that he has so freely given to you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, beloved of the Lord. The Lord revive you, raise you up, and cause you to live in his sight. May 2021 be your best year ever. And if you're smart... You'll say amen right there. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful that you're the God of time and of space. And you don't get perturbed over the changing of the times and the seasons. And we're so thankful that you are our one constant in this ever-shifting and ever-changing chaos in the world around us and we're so thankful that you told us to look unto you to be saved you're our hope you're our salvation you're our glory 
You're the lifter of our head. You're our strength. And it's because of you that we can face the future with hope and with joy and that we can expect to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living because none of this deters you. None of this changes your plans. None of this nullifies your truth. And we're so thankful that you're teaching us to keep praising in the face of adversity, to keep declaring your victory truths in the face of overwhelming odds, to keep trusting and expecting to see your hand at work. Thank you, Father, that not one of your good promises has ever failed. You've been faithful to every generation before us, and you are faithful to us. And just because we have failed you and at different times have gotten out of faith and messed up so exceedingly badly, you do not deny yourself. You do not change. And you love us with everlasting love. We thank you, Lord that you draw us with loving kindness. It is still your plan to cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. It is still your plan to cut the work short in righteousness. And Lord, we just say, Amen. All right, dear friend, great grace be upon you. The magnificent grace of God just propel you <laughs> into greater places of victory in 2021. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later.